What's up and welcome to another episode of the Scott and Ian show on the SBL podcast. It's getting a little chilly outside. I don't know about where you are, but I'm just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the United States, near Canada, and it's getting a little chilly. Therefore, Midwest formal, baby. Got my flannel. Did my wife get this for me at Costco? (laughs) She did. Was there a time in my life that I would have been like, there is no way I'm wearing a piece of clothing from Costco? There was. Is that time over? It is. You guys, I am fully embracing Midwestern winter dad right now, apparently. So I don't know what you're doing, but that's what I'm doing for better or for worse. Hey, check this out. I was just at the Guitar Summit in Mannheim, Germany. Actually, no, the. I think they just call it Guitar Summit in Mannheim, Germany with Voren Saku. This is my lovely bass that Saku Viore built for me, my favorite short scale I've ever played. We did a couple of mods on it at the show. I'm so happy with it. Um, It just looks dang good, too. If you guys aren't watching the pod, check it out on YouTube. Um, So I'm gonna talk to Scott about this show. Was it better than Nam? Is it better than Nam? You're going to have to find out, right? We're also talking about a 59P base that Scott checked out. Is it worth it? Is it? I don't know. Also, why aren't all jazz bases the same? Why they're not? They're not. And why is that? It's maddening to me. Every single jazz bass I pick up, I think like this should probably play like the other one or sound like the other one. And they don't. We're going to dig into that. It's going to be a really fun episode, you guys. Let me tell you what's up at SBL. We have a brand new course that came out called The Art of the Duo with John Patitucci. It came out last week. And I got to say, if you've never played duo music on the bass, it's something you should consider. It's something that I do uh, with different artists. You've maybe seen me do that. I have a big hollow body Gibson that I've played with a few different artists, and it is incredible because you're in a different mindset. It puts you in a completely different zone mentally. Uh, and John Patitucci is going to take you through that. And I need to, like right after this, I'm going to go watch that course. So check that out. That just came out on the Academy last week. We also have mentor sessions coming up uh, Monday, October 16th, Gary Willis learning to learn the skill of acquiring new skills. How do you acquire new skills? Is there a skill to doing so? There is. Gary's going to show you what that is. Also next week, Monday, October 23rd, Danny Moe is in the mentor's hot seat talking about the James Jamerson bass line that every bass player has to hear. And I'm like, hmm, he's not telling me what that is. A little carrot on the end of that stick. I got to check that out as well. Um, Also, you guys, it's the final week to join the Back to School Bass giveaway. Go now to winabasebuildaschool.com. That is winabasebuildaschool.com to join. The giveaway is crazy. Among other amazing bases, F bases, Ken Smith bases, there's also Scott's personal banana base. The banana base, if you're from the United States, the banana base. If uh, you're from the UK, you might say the banana base, right? That he is actually giving that base away. It's crazy. Last week to register. All all good. Hey, you guys, that's enough of me. Let's get to this episode. Okay. Oh, yeah. Give everybody a thumbs up, Winnie. <laughs> Winnie! Oh, Ian's giving you the thumbs up, Winnie. Give him the, th- give him the thumbs up. <laughs> Hello! Oh, sweet winter. The first time I ever saw winter on a screen, Scott, you sent me a loom and yeah. you said, introduce yourself. And she said, hi, I'm winter and I'm poorly. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And she's poorly again. How weird is that? I'm bonkers. Uh, so yeah. sweet, man. Yeah. Yeah. She's poorly. Poor little monkey. You're, For anybody, um, it's yeah. base dad, dude. You got you base dad right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. always, but especially right now. Oh yeah, yeah. She was so sick last night. I was, and, oh. and I was, yeah, it was hilarious. And then we all ended up sort of like in the bed together. For everybody listening, yes. Winter walked into the bedroom last night. He was like, "Oh, I feel sick. I feel sick." And then we, you know, within seconds, there was a, you know, there was a bath. It was puke everywhere, and you know, <laughs> bowls everywhere. And like Ian yeah, knows, right? Yes. So what happens is you all yeah. end up sleeping in the same bed, and there's right. like bowls on the bed or buckets on the bed, and there's towels, towels, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, there's like yeah, limbs good. everywhere. You've got like a <laughs> like a foot in your face. It's like it's brutal. Yeah. But anyway, so that oh. happened last night. Lisa just gone out to pick up my eldest. So uh, so Winter's chilling over there on her iPad um, with a bag of sweets. When in doubt, give him a bag oh, of sweets. Yeah, yeah right. Especially after they just barfed all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. best. Well, luckily we've had no barf. We've had no we're barf good. so far. So yeah, yeah. Look it up. Amazing. We're, we're looking good, Winter, right? Yeah, she's giving it a thumb. You know, I told I told her that I told her that you were coming over in a few weeks. She was like, When's Ian yeah. coming over next? And I was like, Oh and I told her the date. She like wanders away. She's like, Oh great. She wanders away and she goes back, Daddy, that's weeks away. Weeks away. <laughs> Well yeah, it is weeks. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Fly him out for you? <laughs> Uh, yeah. dude, that's great that's She's great i can't wait that, man yeah. well well let's let's hang out we're gonna hit the pub eat some fries dude eat some chunky oh, chips dude. yeah we were down that pub the other day eating some chunky chips yeah. it was awesome and they were talking about custard you were, they were like oh does, yes does ian like custard yeah i was like yeah he likes custard <laughs> amazing oh i lost you i lost you so if anybody's listening we take ian down the pub he eats <laughs> like custard's a new thing for you right yeah, it is. It is. I would say so. I think that it's uh, it's definitely. I mean, I wonder even if the UK and US custard are the same thing. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Should What's check? custard for you again? It's like that yellow <laughs> gloopy stuff. What's yeah, custard? Well, okay, yeah, we have that. We have that. Do you guys have frozen custard like an ice cream? We have. The, have we have that I have over no here. Idea. No, I don't think so. Okay. Culver's, man. Oh, if you come, when you come over here, I'm treating you to a Culver's butter burger. You will love it. And oh. a big thing of frozen custard, Scott, you will love it. You, you it's know, a Midwest a, staple. You're a bag man, aren't you? you <laughs> Wait, you're a bag. I don't know you, what that means. You What's like bags. Mean? You're a bag man. You like bags. Oh. Oh, like backpacks and satchels and carry-alls yes. and gig yes. Of course. Well, you will, appre- you will appreciate this. Do you know that bag I bought you, the, the yeah, bare made one? Very well, yes. It's awesome, right? So anyway, so it's awesome. I was camping in the weekend, uh, the, over the weekend, and I went into yeah. the shop that make that bag in Pateley <sighs> Bridge. Shout out to yes. Pateley Bridge, little uh, little village in Yorkshire. It's freaking awesome. So we're in Pateley Bridge. Made bags. Yeah, we yeah. go in. They make coffee and bags. So I went to get a coffee, and I'm talking to Nell, who is like yeah. she she's like one of the you know one of the founders. I'm talking to Nell, and she's like, oh, she's like we did a new bag, and she said, and this this one's been specifically designed for like carry. It's like the per- perfect size for carry on it's like she said we found like this the the exact size that it needs to be and we maxed it out totally so it's perfect for carry on and i do so i'm checking out the bag i was like oh shit i actually need to buy the bag and then go the bag made me want to travel it was weird i was like oh no (laughs) i need to travel somewhere now so i can buy this bag (laughs) (laughs) so you have a reason (laughs) yeah dude i mean oh i love that yes i love it oh my god so are you gonna come on come on out dude. dude let's go well, I did, yeah. Well, two things. I t- so I talked to Nell. I was like, oh, yeah. I, like, I need to, I need to get that. Like, I didn't get the bag, but I said to Nell, I was like, I need to book somewhere to travel now, so I can buy this bag guilt free. And then also, <laughs> I was talking to her about base cases as well because these bags oh, are wow. awesome. And I was like, yes can you hook me up with who's making these and your product designer so I can talk to them about maybe creating like this amazing kind of like really cool base bag? And she was like, absolutely. So Wow, yeah, so. no way. That's exciting. Yeah. You know what isn't out there, at least that I know of? There's not like a cool waxed canvas. I mean, there's, you know, leather bags are so expensive. Well, these are canvas, not, yeah. I know, that's canvas. what I'm exactly, saying. Like, yeah. a, like a cool canvas in a couple colors, like they do that awesome orange color yes and you know i mean that would be dude that would be so sick like foamed out on the inside so nice and rigid but covered in like a heavy duty canvas with those buckles do you know that do you know that buckle we use like it's oh 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 can i just just like buckles so there was a zip but then like four buckles all the way down yeah that would be cool you guys haven't seen this buckle it might be the best buckle that exists (laughs) on any bag it's a treat to use it is, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. It's freaking <laughs> yes, it awesome. Is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. Anyway, tell me about your travels. 
<laughs> oh man, I, you know, I just did a trip out to Germany. I'd never been. I went out to the guitar summit and guys, I'm going to tell you the bass manufacturers that surprised me, delighted me the most. Um, but before I do, I've got to say I went light. I took one backpack, yeah, my cool. McPherson goods backpack that is actually canvas and leather. It's an incredible bag. Shout out to Scott McPherson who makes them in Minneapolis. So cool. Beautiful. I just brought this small backpack, leather straps, love that. And then I brought my, I have my Vorinsaku base. So I went out there with uh, Vorinsaku, the great Saku Viore, who makes this beautiful short scale base. So did a clinic with them. Um, Where are Vorinsaku out, from? Where are, are they They're like, from Finland. He Finland. looks like a Viking. I was checking that guy he, out. He, like, he yeah, is a Viking. Yeah, yeah Saku Viore. Yeah. Saku uh, Viore means of the mountains. And oh, so he Saku really like, is a, yeah, like he's a Viking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His yeah. last name means of the mountains, and Saku, I guess, translates to Zach, Zachary. So it's like Zachary of the mountains, proper. Oh, amazing, like, yeah. Oh, What's yeah. their setup like? He, are they, like, are they doing loads of, is it like a small manufacturer, or are they doing loads of bases, or kind of like super no. handmade vibes? What's the, what's the deal? super handmade. It's one, it's one base at a time, or guitar. He makes predominantly guitars, oh, but I think he's getting it. more base orders now. Um, he makes probably between 15 and 20, Saku, if you listen to this, I hope I'm getting this info right. But, you know, <laughs> 15 to 20 instruments a year is just one person. There's also a woman that works in a shop uh, by him called Paula and she does all the engraving so like you can have hand engraved like the control plate has this beautiful hand engraving oh, but so I've seen her do okay, you know so if you wanted a wolf or a flag or you know I've saw her do this incredible like gold flake like bow and arrow on a control wow. plate she can do anything she's amazing actually amazing so it's those two but she doesn't do any of the building she just does some of the engraving uh yeah. and saku does all of the building and he is a total badass and i, I remember when he reached out to me to make a base um i've told this story before but i'm going to tell it again because I, it looked cool. The stuff looked cool, but I didn't know him. I didn't know anyone yeah. that had him. So I hit up Vince at the custom shop, Vince Van Tricked, and said, oh. hey, man, at Fender Custom Shop, and said, do you know this guy? And he yeah. said, yes, I do know him, and everyone at the custom shop knows him, and we follow him, and we'd love him to consider coming out and working for Fender someday. Oh, and no way. Yes. And so then I was like, oh, he's, you know, he's been vouched for incredible. Yeah. And I, I told Saku that, and he was like, I had to fact check that. He's like, I checked you on that. I hit up Vince myself and said, is that true? Did that really happen? And Vince was like, yeah. <laughs> That's bonkers. So, so yeah, why did he, they, so why amazing. did they hit him up? Did they just see his bases or something and thought like, oh, we yeah. need him at the of custom shop? Well, well, the interesting thing is, I don't know if, like, I don't know if there's an open offer, so I don't want to be misquoted here, but they like what he's doing. The, the cool thing about him is he does a unique body shape that, that hints at old school and it's incredible yeah, and it's his yeah. own thing. And he also has a unique headstock shape that, you know, this one is reversed, but it sort of reminds me of like the old, there's like, um, a guild, I think it's a guild headstock that's similar to this, or also uh, Tyler guitars from the 90s. Do you remember Tyler? Dude, I freaking love Tyler headstocks. Same. They're just awesome. Totally, same. Yeah. Um, and and like a 50s P bass, right? Like, you yeah, know, there's just a yeah. slight 50s P bass thing. Like, it's sort of like when I saw it, I was like, ooh, it's sort of odd, but I like it a lot. And so, you know, hey, like this instrument is a combo of a bunch of cool Fender aspects. It's Coronado, it's bass six, it's jazz bass with two um, J pickups that he makes himself. Rounds uh, or flats? What have you got on it? Rounds I've or got, flats? I've got rounds on it at the moment, but I bet flats would kill. Oh. Uh, it has a stellar tone. So it, this is almost like the same kind of filter that's in the wall. It does like a low pass filter roll off. Um, single volume knob. So that we kind of, those things we tweaked at the show switches yeah. like a base six. It's very, very interesting and cool. Big chunky, thick neck, like a 51 P, which I love Yeah, stainless frets. Th this is wild. A compound radius. It goes from 7.25 vintage roundy radius up to a flatter, like 10 or maybe 11. Oh, so the it. action yeah. is like yeah. flatter up top. Um, and then gets more sort of roundy and vintage. And 
made out of finished pine from the 1800s, dude. <laughs> Oh, and I bet he just went up there. I bet, I bet he just sort of like wandered up the mountain and freaking ripped it out with his That's big right. Viking mittens out of the ground. That's exactly right. That's and exactly growled. Right. Was a rip. <laughs> yes, yes, that is what he did. Of course, uh, walnut fingerboard. That's interesting. A beautiful maple neck and the tint. He custom tinted it the way I wanted it to. I mean, it's it's, it's cool. Right? It's, it's cool. cool. Yeah. It's wildly customizable. Um, and, and you know, he does all the relicking himself. He's amazing. He's truly like an amazing, amazing builder uh, with really interesting ideas. So anyway, that's, I mean, whatever. That's why I was there. I love the instrument. I would not have gone and hung out with him yeah. all weekend in the team. Um, shout out to Skipper Amps. Shout out to Toaster Cables. Uh, I would not have gone and hung out with that whole team had I had I not loved this instrument so that was great but there's others too there's others that are amazing out there yeah can i tell how, you like yeah go for it go for it what well, like uh, give us top three that caught your eye okay top three meta meta, meta. guitars <laughs> and basses M meta we'd say meta. meta yeah uh they look like spaceships but from they look like spaceships from the past they're oh. so yeah, dude, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. They are so, I mean, you might see them, they're headless and they have a crazy shape, but they are absolutely works of art, beautiful. Um, it's a husband and wife, I believe, from France. Um, and I'm forgetting their names right now, which sucks, but uh, they make incredible, beautiful instruments. And they're just getting started. And they were very cool. They were very cool. Um, also, Marlowe, Marlowe bass. You they loved the Marlowe as well, didn't you? Yeah. I really yeah. did, man. They put out this thing called the Spock bass, which they got a grant. I don't know if they call it a grant, but it was government funded to make an instrument out of a new material. And the story of that is just wild. But briefly, there was a, you know, this hemp material, like a sort of a woven hemp. Yeah. And um, Mr. Marlowe was like, I, I don't think that that's going to be cool. Like, I don't really want to do it. But the government has, funds this program to like build something new out of a new material, which is so wow. cool. And for a year, he, so it was two year funding for the first year. He tried it and it was awful. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to give up. This sucks. Yeah. And then the second year he was like, ah, well maybe, maybe I need to start with the material and see like, what about it is good. And because he was funded for two years. So because of the second year of funding, he dove in and essentially ended up like stretching it like a banjo resonator or a drum yeah. over the sort of exoskeleton that reminded me a little bit of like a Parker, that early Parker fly thing yes. where it wasn't, yes. a, wasn't fully, um, you know, a solid piece of wood, but it was sort of like yeah. an exoskeleton, this thing stretched across it and it's resonant and it's stiff. So it's, you know, you, you can't poke your fingers through it. It's not like a wicker chair or something. Yeah. It's, yeah. and they called it the Spock base. I don't know necessarily why they chose to call it the Spock base. Because it's space age, maybe? Like, nah. that, is that the vibe? I don't know, man. I wish they would have, uh, like, like I, I tell you this, I would have liked the meta bases less if they were called the millennium or the Got falcon okay. or yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. like yeah, i don't yeah. want to I, I personally i don't want an actual specific sci-fi reference in my instruments but Scotty. there you go that's just me that <laughs> yeah that's just me uh the, the captain Spock yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like Captain's kind of cool, I guess. He's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, Chewbacca. <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the the Merlot basses were very cool. Um and the they make that diva fretless that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Also, yeah. I thought they were gonna cost double what they cost, and I told them, raise these prices. So sorry, guys. But I, I was like, Are you kidding me? These are so cheap for what you get. So if you want one, go get one because I'm like, these should be half again as much money or double. Yeah. Yeah. He sold absolutely. all the bases. He sold everything at the show, um, which was very cool. Uh, and then number three. The, yeah. Here's with number three. Yeah, oh, I, I was feeling Dejir. And is oh, that how you say it, Scott? The Lowlander. Yeah. The Lowlander. I, I, I always say Dejir. It's spelled D E space yep. G I E R. Dejir. He's from. Yes. 
I think it's the, from uh, Holland, Netherlands? right? Yeah, it's from the Netherlands, yeah. Yes. And I always geek out over his bases. I always geek out over his bases because he's done all, like, these really cool tests where he'll create a base, like a P base, and they'll have the same pickup, same everything, but he'll do one in Spanish cedar, he'll do one in older, oh, wow. and then he'll do one in something else, and you can listen to all of the different... Oh, it's really I didn't cool. know that. I didn't he's, know that. That's he's very super cool. Geek. Yeah, he's very cool. He's a very oh, cool guy. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Well, the, yeah. I played a bunch of... Well, not a bunch, but I played a jazz, a P, but the one that really stuck out to me as special and interesting because they they do a unique thing with it is their sort of thunderbird nod which is called the lowlander the base lowlander. which yes. you actually hipped me to you were like oh check this out and i saw it online and was like oh yeah that's cool and then i played one they had a green one that just had one pickup in the shop i think they use lawler pickups and it yeah. sounded fantastic and it was light and well balanced and beautiful and i was like oh when you play it because i've played a thunderbird so it's modeled yep. about you know it's off the back of a thunderbird isn't it when yep. you play because i've played a thunderbird and they feel a bit weird yes like, you know it's like it's just a little weird when you yes. played that was it a lot less weird less weird Yes, Less weird. balanced better. Um, I don't know, but I also like the weirdness of a Thunderbird. <laughs> it's <laughs> like for I, me. It's like the, where you rest your like you, if you're playing finger style, you've got this yeah. big wing under your w yeah your forearm. Uh, I mean, there's still a bit of a wing, um, but it's it's worth getting used to. I'll just say that. It's for worth getting used yeah, to. Everybody listening, right? Go to go to YouTube. Pull this pull this video up. Just do. Um, Dije, which is D E space D I E R low G I E R right G I E R yeah yep. Lowlander, and watch the product video that they did for it. They did. Have you seen that video no. with that bald guy rocking out on it? It's awesome. <laughs> cool. It is awesome. Like more like bass brands should do what they did. Like wow. that video is was so inspiring to me. I was like listening to it. It was so cool. Oh, I gotta was, go! I gotta go check it out. I'll send it over to you later. It's wicked. This guy and this, 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 this guy's a great player, and he's playing yep. great lines, and he's got freaking distortion on the bass, and it's just it is really nice, really very cool. cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, that was that was a really inspiring instrument. I mean, I went over. I think I played it twice, and I thought about it. You know, I was like, oh yeah, I thought about it a number of times. Honorable yeah. mentions. Let me say Spectre was there. And I mean, I love, I love a Spectre. They had a relict model, which I'd never seen. And I think that might be coming out. That was really cool. Doug Wimbish was there too, doing clinic, oh, nice. a clinic for Spectre. That was yeah, so fun to see him. And I also have to say, I went over to the Dingwall booth and Dingwall had the best looking base of the entire show. Whoa. But hands down. It was a white D Rock Five that had stripes. It, it's going to be hard to even explain. It had stripes just pinstriping along one of the edges. You know, on that design, how the center section is sort of raised, literally yeah. raised along the base side that had these three thin stripes of brown, orange, and yellow on a white matte body that went up to kind of look like automotive. Um, oh yeah. Successive rectangles near the end of the upper horn. Yeah. And it looked it looked like an old Toyota forerunner or something nice, or like nice. it always there's always been um an automotive thing with them, right? Of like 80s supercar or sort yeah, of modern yeah. muscle car, but that leaned 70s aesthetic for me and it was awesome. It was awesome. I loved that bass. I love looking come, at it. I need to come out to one of these with you, dude. I know I kind of <laughs> dodge them. It's sort of like Ian and I talk about it. I'm sort of like, I dodge them. I, it's, I wouldn't dodge them in the UK. It's the, for me, I'm just like, oh, I need to get on a plane and I need to fly out and it's three days or something. Oh, like, you know, like that You could kind go of for vibe. one day. You could go for one day. You could go for two days. You, do, you can limit your time. You I know, also... I know. You also get to buy that bag, dude. You get to buy that bag. I do buy the bag. Yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> and the reason, just to sort of like put it out there to everybody, it's not that I love, I don't love not going, like going away. I love traveling. I think it's freaking awesome. But when I go away, what happens before I go away is that I have to cram in like a shit ton of work. Because of course. 
I just have to cram it in. And then when I get back, I have to deal with the fallout of being away. So it's like, oh, it's... Yes. And I do that when I go away with the family as well. I feel like I walk over hot coals to actually go away. And then when I get back, I've got like a week to 10 days of just carnage. Of, of like even all hotter of this. coals. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So yes. it kind of puts me off traveling in a way, you know. Of so course. If it was in the I UK, it'd be a lot easier. But I am, I need to... I'm not. It's not an excuse. Well, it is an excuse, but I'm not sort of like... I'm, I'm you can take even responsibility. I'm you can saying, do it for a couple of days. Yeah. I need yeah. to figure it out. It's something. A couple need to of days out. would be so fun. Um, also, shout out one, one other f- cool thing to check out if you're looking for pedal board stuff, guys. Cool. Soul Man. Um, two two really interesting companies out there that are doing really cool custom boards are Soul Man, and they're also from Finland. They do beautiful. They're like simple black metal, but then they have sides that like are walnut or wood, and they look like kind of like an old Moog um, oh, yeah. synthesizer. They're gorgeous, and they do a bunch of different sizes, modules to fit in if you need XLR, if you need um, IEC or ins and outs. Really, really cool board. So check that out, Soul Man. And the yeah. other one is Schmidt Array. Have you seen those, Scott? Schmidt, I think. Do they, are they cool and they open up and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think that Elaine, um, Elaine, not Elaine, Karen, um, oh, shit. Ariel Posen, I think, had one. I yes. think Ariel had one. I bet he did. I, I think I, that's right. Yes. And I also think that Josh Smith, uh, yeah, Josh Smith had one as well. When, when we did them sessions in London, yeah. What they, they call Schmidt vi- Array. Yeah. Schmidt Array, yeah. And they're made in Germany, I believe. Martin is the guy. And um, we chatted. It was so fun. But they make really interesting. That's not for people that like want to change the order of stuff. That's for super OCD, you know, like dropping it into the perfect place, like leaving a build set for a year or longer. Yeah. That's like... Yeah. But those are, they are beautiful and very cool. Um, and I don't, actually don't even know if they were displaying, but Martin was there and we chatted and I've been looking at those for a long time. But one that I did really get my hands on and like enjoy was the uh, Soul Man boards from Finland. They're just super cool. Really super nice, cool. yeah. Very nice. So yeah, man, I mean, also so many people talked about, uh, SBL and talked about how they listen to the podcast. So if I met you and you told me that you listened to the podcast or checked out what we do at SBL, thank you. It yeah, was thanks, guys. Uh, like always, please just come up and talk. I love seeing you. I love shaking your hand. I love, uh, hearing your story. I tried to spend as much time as I possibly could. I mean, I had a raw throat and my feet were aching, but I still, I want to, <laughs> I want to take the photo i want to have the conversation so uh it was so fun to get to see everybody uh yeah guitar Amazing, summit, baby. with with bases and, and guitars in mind more bases this time i should mention i'm sure that you mentioned it in the intro as well that you did but just to mention just to everybody hey we're doing a massive giveaway right now humongous yes, giveaway are. right now and we've got some incredible bases that you can win. Um, we're giving away five, like, these gorgeous bases. We've got my yellow banana base that we're giving away. I can't we're, believe I still, that is so cool that you're doing that. It's wild. I, I think so, yeah. A tear is running down. It's welling up in my eye right <laughs> yeah, now. So yeah, yeah, we're giving is. away the, the, the yellow... Uh, bn5 f base the banana base my personal one we're actually giving away that base uh we're giving away an ibanez gw what is it gwb 1005 which is my personal gary willie signature Dude. um what else are we giving away giving we, away oh, that got, beautiful smith that beautiful smith the ken smith custom white tiger which is just absolutely incredible and sounds bonkers and then we've got two more f bases both my personal bases uh we've got the uh this beautiful it's like a four string it's called a vf4 but it's like a really customized version um that you won't see that many around that we're giving that away and we're giving away a six string vf6 as well both f bases incredible bases and yeah, if that you want six, if, you played on the Thundercat video, yeah, yes, that one, yeah. yes, that's. And the if one. anybody wants to get in it, it's completely free to to uh, to enter the giveaway. All you need to do is go to winabasebuildaschool.com, winabasebuildaschool.com, and uh, and grab your free entry there. And then there's a bunch of fun stuff you can do once you're entered to earn more entries and good stuff like that. And then also, just to let you know, we just mentioned the yellow banana base. Um, I have released the album 
Go check it out. It's on Spotify. It's on all of those cool places. We're also <sighs> releasing the live videos every Monday onto the YouTube channel. Ooh. Here on the podcast, I'm doing full synopsis breakdowns of all of the tracks as well every single week. And you can get the free ebook with all of the tab and notation in completely again free. All you need to do is go to scottsalbumbonus.com and you can get the full thing there. Scottsalbumbonus.com. Go get it. It's, uh, it's gonna. I'm really enjoying releasing the album. Actually, like I've you've seen me sort of like posting. I've been doing all sort of like things so on Instagram. Fun, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's really really fun. It's kind of making me itchy to do the next one. In all oh, honesty, that's yeah. great. That's really actually a good sign. I remember yeah. making a record with my old band, and it was so much work, and it was so much. It was brutal, and it took forever. And someone said, "Oh, well, that'll just be good for you know when you make the next one." And I wanted to crawl into a hole and die. So yeah, yeah, the fact yeah. that you are excited for the next one is really that bodes well. That bodes really well. When I think it, so, man. We're, we're we're doing this before. I mean, we're recording this podcast. By the time it goes out, it'll be out. But when does the album officially drop? It or when did it? On <laughs> yeah, when does it drop? yeah, October first. Oh, October first. Oh. Yeah. And today is what the twenty sixth. So just Sunday. what are we talking? Sunday, dude. Ooh. Drops on the Sunday, and then the first video goes out on YouTube on Monday. Then the documentary goes up, I think, the week after. Like it's, it's Unbelievable. pretty Unbelievable. Cool. Oh yeah, we've done a full documentary as well. If we haven't mentioned that full documentary. Um, and it's our first sort of like bash at doing a documentary, which I'm really excited about because it got me thinking about, I wonder if there's an opportunity to, I'd love to make documentaries for the community. Um, so for instance, I pitched this to you, didn't I? Like, can we make the greatest documentary that's ever been made about the P-Base? Oh, then yeah. can we make the greatest documentary that's ever been made about the jazz base? Like, yes. wouldn't that be freaking awesome? Yes. We should partner with Fender on that. Like if, if anybody from Fender is listening and you're up for it, like we're up for it. So reach out, give us a shit. If you could, you know, yeah, just Scott, Scott's pace lessons.com. <laughs> oh my word. Yeah. I, should, I think everybody knows anyway. So Scott, Scott's yeah. pace com. If you're from Fender, give us a shout. Um, we're thinking about doing it anyway. So it, maybe it's something that we could uh, chat to you guys about. It'd be cool. Oh, that would be so fun. I mean, the, count yeah. me in forever. Yeah. The I greatest want to, oh. P-based documentary of all time. Well, has all there time. ever even, I'm sh maybe there has been, but has there ever been a documentary about a specific bass instrument? No. I mean, there's been the Jocko doc, right? I mean, there's been. Oh yeah, Jocko, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I mean, maybe there has, but not that I'm aware of, or at least not that I have watched. So, and there should be. One there needs to exist. There definitely should be. Yeah, one needs to exist. Me? Yeah, The P-based, the P, dude, some would say. Some would say that the P bass paved the way for rock and roll. Do you, do yeah, you know that argument? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Like absolutely, before yeah. the electric bass, right? You could only it was upright, it wasn't amplified, and you could the band could only really be as loud as or just completely no distortion, engulfed. dude. No distortion Wait. because yes. distortion to begin to begin with, they had to crank the amps to actually <laughs> distort. So they <laughs> right. couldn't crank the amps because they couldn't hear the bass, unless <laughs> yeah. there was some sort of like band out there that just didn't have bass. I guess that that's the. Yeah, that I'm sure there been, was. Could have happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, once a bass player got to plug an electric bass guitar into that bassman amp and turn it up. Everyone else got to turn up and drummers got to play louder and everyone was yeah. like, oh, everyone was having more fun <laughs> <laughs> after 1950, after 1951, <clears throat> they had more fun. Scott, that's the yeah, deal. Dude. That's what happened. And I tried, I, I tried a 59 P based of the day. Oh, oh. <laughs> it <laughs> andy's place oh of course of course it was of course oh. it was at andy's place yeah it was, it was oh good oh my dude. god it Which, was like uh, was 50, it he's only got 159 and it's it's really nice it's really nice does he still have my favorite bass which was a f oh, 57 but but still like stings it has the white pick guard but uh, like a like a 51 I don't know. I don't think he's someone got probably, that still. Someone probably bought I don't think that. He's, that was yeah. such a good bass. God. Yeah, well, this one's a great bass. I went over there with sort of like, I was like, should I be buying a 59P <laughs> bass? Like, my, part of my brain said I should be. But then I Dude. got there, I played it. I was just like, it's great, but it's hellishly expensive. It's like oh, yeah. crazy money. It's like yeah. 
Sixteen and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, like that that's a is, lot of cheese. That's more expensive than my wife's car. <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. It's a lot of cheese. Yeah. So just think about the amount of cheese you could buy with that. So I, yeah, loads, loads. Like the weird thing is, and we've talked about this before, yeah. and psychologically, I just can't get my head around it. I think we talked about it on a recent podcast is. If you buy a, a, an instrument like that, the money still exists, which is weird. It's so weird. So if yes. you if you got if you had like sixteen and a half thousand pounds or whatever nineteen twenty thousand dollars whatever, if you go and buy an instrument like that, it's still worth that in a year. In fact, it's probably worth more. That's so that, right. So it's go. It's like the money still exists, but still. The guilt also still exists. Oh, yeah. The guilt and, and, of like, oh, it's yes. weird. Yes, and it isn't liquid money. I mean, yeah. that's the, you know, the misnomer that people have about collections is people are like, oh, this is my retirement. Well, it's like, well, but there's a step to unloading You still got to sell it. Yeah, you yeah. still got to sell it. Yeah, find a buyer and take photos and ship it. And oh, dear Lord. I mean, it's not, it's not like having money in the bank, but it's closer to having money in the bank than buying an automobile or buying yes. food oh, or yes. buying, you know, like, like things that degrade or things that you use and now the money is gone. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like real estate and guitars, man, and maybe gold bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly that. Like, yeah. like in the States, it's guns, gold, <laughs> guitars, and real estate. <laughs> no shit, guns go up in value as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, a any gun, or do you need to buy no, like, a particular No, probably not type? any gun. Okay. But they, okay. they, over the years, they've held their value incredibly well. And um, and then, you know, especially when a, my wife actually did design for Federal Ammunition, which is like a big bullet manufacturer. Oh, yeah. And she told me that the guys there, this is wild. She told me that all the guys there, it was back when Obama was in um, office, and they said, Obama is the best thing for business. Because when a Democrat gets in the White House. Sorry, we're jumping down this. We just oh, took a did real the left value turn. of guns go? Well, up? well, everybody, all the all the NRA dudes freak out and yeah. buy and hoard guns and bullets. And federal could not make bullets fast enough. No shit! Wow, oh, that's amazing. Oh yes, and so well, they're like keeping. For it, you know? like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just very interesting. Yeah, because I always thought, oh, the gun the gun lobby. I mean, it's all it's very right wing. It's very yeah. you know Republican, very NRA. And she said, well, yes, surface. But if you're a bullet manufacturer or a gun manufacturer, the best thing for your business is a Democrat in the White Them House. That guys are loving it, loving it. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> and, until it gets, you know, unless it gets banned or, but, but man, federal could not, when she was doing that gig, she was making boxes essentially, or she was designing, um, packaging. And they said that it was like the best, the best thing for business. I just thought that was fascinating. Like, so strange. <laughs> it is strange, so, isn't you know, it? yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very strange. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Hey, you know what? I've said this before double art. Hey, if you're not a gun person and if you're not a real estate, you can't afford real estate and you maybe don't want to gamble on stocks, yeah, get yourself a base because you can oh also my, play wow, it. Yeah. Do, you, know do I mean? you like? Is there anything that's sort of like like keeping you up at, at night? There been any bases that, that you kind of sort of like itching about, and you're like, oh, should I? Should I not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna go. I thought you were like, no. I'm so I'm really content. There's uh, nothing I'm I, looking at. I I will say that I'm more content than I've been in a long time. Yeah. Um, like I've been playing that Vorin Saku a lot, and I've been playing the Lull. Uh, yeah, that yeah. the IMA for lo I love that base. I'm taking it out with Eric Hutchinson um, coming up here soon. But the this is dumb. This is just dumb. Uh, but it's true, and I want it. You know me. Like I, I have th the niche for all the. I want one cool example of all the classics. Oh yeah, right. So yeah. I want, yeah. and there's a couple of holes that I'm like, uh, I don't need that. I would. I don't even know if I'd ever play it, but I want it because it. I want to fill the slot with it right and yeah, it's a yeah. steinberger xl2 from the oh, 80s dude, dude. yeah you messaged me about it i do think that that is absolutely worthy of being in your collection i think it's kind of like almost <laughs> yeah. like 
Dude. I'm not even sure that you have a collection without one of those bases. <laughs> you are the devil. You are the devil. And oh, and I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. They're so freaking cool, though, aren't they? They're, they're so, so cool. cool. And they're yeah. iconic sounding and they're just so interesting to me. I mean, and what a design revelation. Yeah. And I wish I would have bought one 10 years ago and everyone thought they were stupid. And, you know, that's, hey, the hack is if you want to get into, God, God, I hate the word, but if you want to collect or you want to invest, a really great way to get in is buy something now that people think is not cool. So I'm and trying to even wait, think of yeah. what that would be. And then, and then you wait. Um, but yeah, like Steinberger XL2, that's the sort of like black broom shaped headless base for those of you yeah. out there. Like what the like hell even bat. is that? It's like a cricket bat. Yeah. <laughs> cricket bat. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and so there's that. And then I also would love, I've always wanted to have a late fifties Gibson EB2. That's Ooh, the yeah. like hollow body yeah, dude, yeah. with the, with a black pickup, not the silver covered pickup, but the black pickup that's close to the neck sunburst. They're expensive. I've seen a few of them come and go and I'm always tempted, but those are sort of the two that I feel like are missing from uh, the collection. The collection. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then tomorrow, Scott, I'll want to sell it all. Tomorrow, I'm like, get it out of here. And it's yeah, interesting, yeah, dude, because yeah. you, I'm pointing a finger at you, Divine. You have been like, oh, I've got to get rid of all these bases. What have you done to me? You know, and now, and I feel like now you're back on it, baby. <laughs> Are you back on the train? Are you want, well, you've, you've got a base coming to my house. You got a base coming over. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's weird, isn't it? Like stuck in this sort of like perpetual, I want to get rid of everything. Yeah. I can't stop looking at rebase on reverb. Oh! I know, I know. Yeah. Like maybe, do you know, we've talked about my sort of like, I've talked about this sort of like, oh, the search for my sound. What's the Excalibur? What, what is my sound? And I really want to sound, I want to, you know, now I'm doing my original music with, uh, with the project and stuff. I want to really find, find an original sound. And with that, like, yeah, like legit, I do. But is it just an excuse to, to kind of like just geek out on bases? <laughs> is it just a freaking excuse? Like, I don't right. think it is. I'm just posing the question. But it is, it's interesting. It is interesting that um, I, it, I think that my base geekery and sort of uh, the amount of time I've spent on reverb has definitely gone up several notches <laughs> since I was like, yeah. I need to find my sound. I need to find my... Yeah. And actually, just to speak to that, I'm yeah. kind of in a weird space with it because mm. I love the the old aesthetic of instruments. I love it. I love listening to other people play it as well. Yes, yes. But I'm just struggling to, to know whether I can actually... My voice is on that instrument. And a know. 50s P bass or a... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I know yeah. what you mean. I know what you mean. I get, I get what happens is I get, um, and, I, and this is an interesting point, I guess, for everybody to think about. I get hoodwinked and romanced by other people's approach and sound to the instrument. Yes. And I love their approach. And I'm like, oh, it's, they, oh, it's so, this is so yes. beautiful. Listen to yes. their tone. Listen, listen to the sound, listen to the vibe. And then I forget about that I have a, completely separate sound and and yes. my own vocabulary and and all of that it's all of that to say that and i do love that vintage aesthetic and i think that and i'm not saying that that isn't available or my sound isn't that or something that i definitely should explore in the future if, if for sure it is but i do i will say this i'm not going to name any names there are people that do obviously there are people that play older style instruments right yeah. Some of them, most of them I love. But interestingly, there's a few players that play that older style instrument, okay? But yeah. they play more like me. And mm. check this out. it There's something about it I don't like. Really? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I don't yeah. Like, yeah. So I'll tell you sort of like, for instance, I won't name... Who, who kind of stuff like it turns me off, but I will turn it like, like people that like play older style instruments and it turns me on, right? 
Not yep. turns me on in that way, okay? But you know, it turns me on. So like Mike Le- Mike <laughs> League, I love the way that he plays an older yes. style instrument, and his playing has be- sort of it's 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 kind of developed because of the sound of yes. his instrument. He plays those older style instruments, and with that, his his approach to the instrument has developed, and so it's sort of like it's this you know amalgamation of two things now. You know, yeah. his his vocabulary and his sound, and it sounds beautiful. Another one, absolutely, John, Jonathan Marin, very different from Michael League. You know, in terms of his kind of sort of like the sounds he produces, but there's something about Jonathan Marin that I don't listen to the lines he plays and just think, ah, that doesn't sort of like sound authentic it sounds very authentic it sounds yeah. like it should be it sounds you agreed know, one it sounds agreed yeah yes but, but there are a few players out there that actually oh. play more like me yeah. like they're and they play maybe like basses like p basses and stuff like that and i'm just like and, and for whatever reason there is friction for me and i'm not <laughs> sure whether it's my ears where i'm just like oh i'm just like it just doesn't seem agreed on. Hmm. There's a P bass, and then there's all of this in, intricate kind of, you know, melodic minor substitutions and all of this <laughs> stuff happening. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm confused. I'll tell you exactly what. It definitely doesn't grab me emotionally, make me go, uh, ooh. It kind of confuses me. I'm like, oh, is oh, it sort of I'm feel like a sure. square peg in a round hole? Like it just doesn't bit. quite, yeah. Right. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and and I do. I have played P basses a lot in the past, and I do play like me. So I'm not sure whether I have done that. You know, whether I would fall into that bracket as well. If if I could objectively like listen to myself, would I be like, oh yeah, that sounds like it's agreed upon, or would I listen and think, oh, I'm not sure that that wow. sounds congruent. It's like listening to a fusion drummer play on a jazz kit right it's not gonna sound congruent yeah. it's gonna sound freaking weird it's wide like, open what? bass drum l- ringy little toms. ringy toms yeah ringy <laughs> yeah, toms yeah. and a wide open bass drum and they're sort yeah. of like tr- they're doing all of the same stuff that they it, would right. do on a that modern instrument yes. it's kind of like that i'm like it's there's an incongruence there so there you go. I'm not sure. But and I may, think maybe, the only solve for it is to make more music. <laughs> and I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as you go to, you'll find that like, oh, p- potentially even on the same record, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same bass. You could play P bass on the, on the kind of the funk tune. Fooey, dude. Could... Fooey to that. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to be the same? You want it to be the same bass for the whole record? It has to be the same. It has to be the same. Oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, if it if it has to be the same, then you are on the search. Uh, the I'm thing the search, I was wondering dude, yeah. is like, is it more of a modern sound and a and a vintage aesthetic? I mean, obviously, there's tons of that stuff out there, right? Stuff that's yeah, active yeah. with you know, and then it's beat up or it's you know it has these sort of vintage nods i mean part of, i don't know like how much of the vintage thing is is aesthetic to you versus tonal oh man it's definitely aesthetic it's definitely aesthetic um yeah. but it is tone as well it's like bass um it's the amount of bass in the higher notes it's it's like Yes, it's the whole, I know. Yeah, it's the whole thing. It's the whole, and, and it's also the the simplicity of the lines that those players play. But I'm mm. not sure whether I've got the the restraint to be able to do that. Um, <laughs> my style yeah, is very to play simple. It's just like really, really different. Not only in it's really different in the lines I play, but also right. my technical approach to it as well. So, ah, oh, so interesting. I just could talk about this stuff for, forever. Me, I really could. Dude. Honestly, I really, really could. Yeah. Same. Uh, I mean, and it's, and I like you too, where uh, I, whenever I hear someone, I think, oh, that, maybe I should kind of go toward that. 
Yes. And I never hear someone and think, oh, I want to sound exactly like that. I just get inspired. And I yeah. think you're the same way, right? It's like when you hear somebody, you're not like, oh, I want to just do that. I want to be that style. You know, in the back of your mind that you've got your own thing, you know, you do, but you kind of wonder, ooh, would that sound, that vibe, that aesthetic enhance my thing? Would it, would it bring me closer to what I hear in my head? That That's, does that resonate for you? That's oh, how I dude, feel. Dude, dude, like so freaking hard. Like yes, something like this is so, like I had a weird experience the other day. Like, and I think I've mentioned stuff like this on the podcast, but I, I woke up with a phrase going around my head. I've never happened in my life. Like a melody? I woke, no. Oh, it's like words. Oh, like, uh, words? Like, oh, wow. Yeah, I think I must have been dreaming or something. And like, and I woke up as I, you know, like you, you yes. when you're dreaming, sometimes you wake up. But as I was waking up, I had this phrase oh, that wow. either I was repeating to myself in my head or somebody else was repeating to me. And I'm not oh, sure wow. what it was, but it was a kind of weird experience. And I woke up and the phrase was, be one of one. Be one of one. Whoa. Be one of one. And it was this like repeated phrase got and I like woke up and I almost said it out loud, be one of one. And I know exactly what it meant. It was like mm. just be one of one. Don't be one of many. Do uh. not be one of many. Be one of one. Because by being one of one, you are in in a you know what I mean like there's nobody else that you can oh yeah, that guy, he's kinda like this thing. Oh he can like oh no, he's one of one. It's like mm. Steve Swallow is one of one. one like there's of no one. other Steve Swallow. He's no one way. of one. You yes. know, exactly. Yes. Carlos Benevent, you know, that's like a great Spanish flamenco bass player. One of one. Bass he's player? His own, yeah. Carlos Benevent or Benevente, yeah. He's a flamenco bass player. He played with Chick Career back in the day. Phenomenal player. I don't know um, this guy. Oh, he's great, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'll send, I'll send him, I'll send some stuff over so you wow. can check it out. One yes. of one. So, right. it's like, and it, it also made me think <clears throat> about when you said that you saw me playing that P bass back in the day on YouTube, and you were like, "Ooh, that's interesting." Kind yep. of fusion guy, but playing a P bass. Yep. And actually, when I listen back to those videos, it feels congruent when I was doing that. It does. It doesn't feel incongruent. So, yes, I don't know. I know, man. And it's, you know, I've told you about this a million times. You're sick of, you're sick of me talking about it. But when I heard you play My Funny Valentine with a freaking pick. Oh, with the pick. I yeah. was like, wow, that's interesting. And it did not sound like Steve Swallow to me. I know that that's like you said that you were in this sort of Steve Swallow zone. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's the interesting thing. Like everybody listening, even if you try to sound exactly like the people that you're emulating, you won't. And especially as long as you yeah. have multiple, right? Like as long as you've got multiple genres of music that you're checking out, multiple people that you're trying to imitate. Like, I think if I'm not, if, if, if I may be one of one doesn't mean plug your ears and don't listen to anything, right? Oh, one of no, one means no, all. pull everything in that you like, pull everything and even things you don't like, pull everything in. And then the combination of all those things is what's going to make you one of one. Right. Yeah, and, and it can exist on different levels as well. Can't it? Like when you were talking about that Thunderbird bass, honestly, yeah. I was like, the, the first thing I thought about was that dream or whatever it was when I woke up, be one of one. I was like, oh, that's yeah. cool. That's like, who's playing, who's playing a Thunderbird? Right. Who's playing Thunderbird is a badass player like you. I you know. know what I mean? Like, that's right. cool. If so, you know, right. like if you were playing a Thunderbird, that would be like, <laughs> it, it would be, oh, you know, like Ian with the Thunderbird. Like, it's just <laughs> right. so freaking left center. It's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yes. uh, I just love that stuff, man. Yeah. So maybe I'll still play the Thunderbird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a Thunderbird infusion would be so cool. I mean, who was that dude that we were talking about? Dude, that played the there's Rick? a guitar player. Dude, there's a guitar player that yeah. plays a Thunderbird. And he's like awesome and plays Firebird? with like- Firebird, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He yes. plays with like Tony Gray. So he's played with all of the fusion oh, guys, but yeah. he's like, he's there. He's got like a bandana on. He's dressed in denim and he's got a <laughs> Firebird. And, then, badass. What, and I'll tell you what, it's badass. When I yep. saw him play, I was like, instantly, I was like, it just stuck out like a sore thumb. I was like, oh, that's badass. This guy's got like, he doesn't even need to play a note because I know that there's something really interesting and individual yes. about him because he's in this band full of fusion heads 
and he's there with his denim and his bandana and his firebird. Like, yep. that's flexing. How freaking cool is that? <laughs> yeah, it's Dude, so cool. Uh, uh, also, it reminds me of your. It reminds me of your co-conspirator Simon, right? Oh, Who's yeah, playing yeah. an SG? I mean, I know it's not a yeah. Gibson SG, right? It's like a Japanese S. Is it a Tokai? It's a Tokai, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like that's so cool, and yeah. people remark about it, and they notice, and you know, and it's just like, hasn't he had it forever? Yeah, I think it might be the only guitar he's ever. Yeah, it's crazy. He's like one of those individuals that, unlike us, who who are like kind of like flies drawn to shit, <laughs> like, yeah, totally. and the shit is bases, and we're just like Dude, buzzing guilty around as it. Charged. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's sort of like one of these guys who just like gets an instrument and then just becomes a badass. I've got a few friends that have done that in the past. They're they're not driven by kind of like whatever we're driven by, you know, this sort of like addiction to instruments or whatever it is. But it's interesting that when he got that out at the studio, same, same kind of emotion, he got it out. And I was like, an SG? Yeah. You're about to do a fusion record on an SG? And yeah. he was like, yeah, dude. And then I looked down and he's got his freaking slippers on. I was like, dude, you rock. <laughs> he's in the studio. I kid you not playing an SG and he's got his slippers on. Like you don't get any cooler than that. <laughs> dude. Okay. Gun to your head. You have to commit to one aesthetic and tone sound for the rest of your life right now in five seconds. I'm going to count down and you have to tell me your gut. Jazz your bass. gut. I'll Jazz bass. Yeah. Jazz bass. Jazz bass. Yeah. You, I didn't yeah. even need the countdown. No, because, because I can, I, it, because it gives me everything. It gives me everything. Yeah, it gives me the P bass. I know it doesn't sound like a P bass, but it gives me the Close, thing, like yes, that warm, yes. that neck thing that that yes. somebody does. But it also gives me the bridge if I if I want it, you know. And there's like a really particular jazz bass sound that I like actually, and it's it's it, I guess it, like oh man, can we even go? We should let's do it. Let's go down this uh, this rabbit hole. Please. For a so I think that there's. For some reason, everybody kind of like buckets jazz basses as all one thing. Right. Jazz bass. Right? Yes. And it's not. Of course not. It's not. It it it's just not. And I do not know why. And I think that you might know why, because you're like a jazz bass freak. You're a geek and a freak, yeah. and I love you. And I'll give you an example, right? Yeah. And I think it's more than EQ. I think it's yes. more than EQ. So you listen to I'll give you two distinct kind of sort of like upper as opposite ends of the spectrum which which aren't which are uh, i guess because i could say oh we've got you know like um uh, what was bob marley's bass player called aston family man barrett so, yeah so you could you could say we've got marcus miller and we've got aston family man barrett right Two, they're completely different but i mean like you can actually hear like listen to two people slap a jazz bass and like and for whatever reason the basses sound very different so one would be like a marcus miller style approach right like it sounds like marcus miller well yep. i've got a i've got a 70s jazz bass and it doesn't sound anything like that i know i know what you mean nothing right. like that and right. it's got a maple board like Mar marcus it's got yep. 70s 70s pickup sp um, spacing like marcus so yep. you might be thinking well it's not got that active eq that marcus has got well i've sat next to marcus without that active eq on and it just sounded like marcus right interesting so, yes so that 70s jazz bass doesn't sound anything like it also one of my favorite bass players that i listen to all the time and has barely played on anything that i can find is a guy called Lars. Larry Danielson, who's just a monster. He plays this, I think like a 65 jazz bass. And when he plays that bass, he like slaps, slaps it. It's so greasy. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like if Mark, Marcus for me is like this crisp, clean, yes. Yes. like that's the thing, right? Yep. Well, like Larry is like, like grease. It's yeah. like, it's like somebody's like poured chicken grease or car grease all over him. It. It's like <laughs> greasy and it's dark. Yes. It's a dark tone. And I'm like, look, like, what's with that? I know. Jazz basses. Like, it should sound in the same kind of like vibe. 
but they just sound completely different. They do. And, and yeah. I've noticed what that too. What the heck's going on? What's going Dude, on? I don't know. I, I think it's something to do with the interaction of the pickups. I mean, I think it's, there's single coils and single coil pickups have just such an interesting sonic signature. Like depending on how they're wound, they can accentuate mid range or they can be really clear and belly. Right. But when you put two together, like a humbucker, like a split yeah. coil P base pickup or, you know, like a, a humbucking, um, uh, like Thunderbird pickup. I think those start to sound more homogenous. It's like more, you know, it's like more ingredients and it kind of, you, you taste yeah. less of the ingredients, but yeah. like 51 style P bases with just that one single coil and jazz bases sound so remarkably different through, through the years, throughout uh, different pickup manufacturers, because I think you're dealing with single coil pickups that have, I, I think a, a very honest sort of production of sound Got it. versus P yeah. bass pickups to me all kind of sound the same. They I mean, sound very similar, don't they? Yeah. They kind of yeah. do. Uh, but man, I mean, Je I agree. And uh, someone else that I think is like that sort of pour the grease over the sound is Michelle and Deggio Cello. She exactly. Right. Okay, so that's the vibe. That's yes. the vibe, right? I should have used Michelle. I see more people know Michelle. Exactly that. So she's using a jazz bass. Yep. Should sound like, but it doesn't. It yes. sounds like, it does sound like a jazz bass, but it sounds sort of like a jazz bass with a ton of grease poured over it yeah and it's like what is that well i mean i hate to be reductive and just be like well it's the pickups i mean i don't think it's the body i don't really think it's the neck i don't really think it's the fingerboard i do think it has to do with the variety of sounds you can get out of a jazz bass by moving your yeah. hands yeah. by tweaking the the uh volume controls to sort of blend a bit of the pickups together the tone control thing i don't know i just think there's more option on a jazz bass to have a, a wider thing right a wider variety of sounds and then you really hear that manifest in all those different players but dude i agree i have never ever played a jazz bass that i've been like oh yep that is exactly what i thought it was going to sound like every time i pick up a J, i'm like well here we go what's this going to be like is it yeah. going to be super scooped and weird is it going to be fat and surprise yeah. me it's like it's yeah. like a mystery box dude it's, it's a so mystery weird, it? yeah. it's like I mean, there was that 68 uh, sunburst that I played at Andy's that was like, it ha was big and beautiful and warm. And I was like, oh my God, I want this bass. And then I played another one of the same era and it was like scooped and kind of different and less warm, but brighter. And I was like, oh, weird. I mean, like, oh God, I think it's to do with single coils. I wonder if people that are really into strats, think the same mm, thing. Maybe, I wonder yeah. if people that play yeah. strats are like, God, strats are so experience. varied. Yes. Yeah. Like you think they're all going to sound like Gilmore. You think they're all going to sound like Corey Wong or, you know, but, but whenever you pick up a strat, you're like, Whoa, okay. I guess on this one, I don't know. It's like the distance, the pickups to the string and how you combine them. And yeah, oh, like I, it's for me, just, like the, the perfect sound almost to your, like, what is it? It's, I said, I blurted out jazz bass, but with yep. a caveat, it's a jazz bass. If you could get the, a jazz bass sound in like a, you know, and hold it in your hands and then you just plunge it into grease. That's the sound <laughs> I would love. That's yeah. the sound because I actually love listening to people when it sounds super crisp and like that's yep. the thing, but I don't want to sound like that. I right. want it to be like, I want it to sound like filth. I want it like, ugh. Like Michelle, mm, like Larry, yes. like that kind of just maybe it's maybe it is the pickups. Maybe it's like really dead strings as well. Like strings, you know, I know yeah. that Michelle like famously played with really dead strings. I yep. will say though that that jazz bass of mine that I've got like new strings on that. It still sounds greasy as heck. Yeah, it's greasy. Yeah. That bass yeah. is greasy. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever played flats on a jazz? No. You should try I really, it. I really want to experiment with it. Yeah. I really want to experiment. It. Like the new, like flats that sound sort of bright, like Fender 9050s or, or Diodario chromes um, to a lesser extent, but still very cool. Like the Dunlop flats that come out sounding really bright are really interesting. Actually, super uh, yeah. interesting on a, on a jazz bass. 
Uh, and you know, and who, who they don't... does like if somebody's listening to this and they're like, well, yeah, this sounds cool. I want to go listen to somebody that's playing in Charles Beth with flats. Who does? I mean, I do. You <laughs> do, yeah. But yeah. but but I but but mostly honestly with effects. So it's not a it's not a very good representation of that of that like traditional sound. I would say the the one I can think of is Joe Osborne, but he was also playing with a pick. I don't know how well that would there's some definitely some stuff of Michelle playing flats on a jazz. It the what really hooked me and ma- and convinced me to do it is there is a thing of Michelle and Dego Cello doing a clinic at Berkeley. And there's just a small moment. It's on YouTube. There's just a small moment where she picks up this old jazz. And I mean, if it's not flats, it's the deadest rounds I've ever heard. And she just starts to just play just simple. And it just is like, fuck, it's honest and lovely. And, um, you know, and it kind of, but it, I don't know, man, it doesn't bark the same way. You might miss the dig in. Zzz. You know, when you dig a jazz bass, when you dig in on the neck pickup yeah. and it's like, yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. really do that it's anymore. Not that vibe, it kind of goes, yeah. it kind of goes clunk when you play it that way. Yeah. Um, but like, if you sort of play light and crank, Oh, it's a pretty, I don't know, man, it, it's worth, it's worth experimenting with. Anyway. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word oh outrageous let's call it guys thank you so much for listening uh, today we go we, we ramble today we we, we you know oh, it's, you know you guys know us we're, we're normally a little bit more on point than this we had some stuff on the list we didn't even get to the stuff on the list we were going to talk about strings we didn't even talk like let, in fact should we do it next yeah time. next time let's do strings right Yes, yeah, guys, we'll we're going to talk about strings next time because, yeah, because it's a really, really interesting subject. And I think that we all talk about the different bases, yada, yada, yada. And strings yeah. can have a huge effect on not only the sound of your bass, but also the feel of it. And I will openly huge. say, I have not experimented enough with strings. And I feel really mm. embarrassed to tell you the reason why. I'm going to save that until the episode. I will mm. reveal why I have not experimented a bunch with strings still knowing that it has a huge impact on your sound you can hear that on i the can't next wait episode. to know yeah dude yeah dude. <laughs> open loop time dudes we'll see you in a bit yeah, yeah. take it easy guys bye take care everybody <laughs>